modalities, you have different eco modalities. One is a conventional eco, which is a two dimensional eco or two eco, and they have a motion mode eco, which is a M mode eco. Then you have a Doppler eco, which can be subdivided into a continuous wave Doppler, which we call a CW Doppler. Then you have got a pulse wave Doppler, which is a PW Doppler, and you've got a color flow Doppler, which is a CF Doppler. Now, all modalities will follow the same principle of ultrasound. And they actually differ in how reflected sound waves are collected and analyzed. You've got a two dimensions used to see the actual structures and motion of the heart structures at work. Ultrasound is transmitted along several scan lines, 90 to 120, over a wide arc about 900 and many times per second. The combination of a reflected ultrasound signals, they actually build up an image on the display screen. And most of the times, if you look at it carefully, the 2D eco view will actually appear cone shaped on the monitor. So this is how a cone would look like. What about M mode echo? M mode echocardiogram is a diagram which shows how the position of its structures change during the course of cardiac cycle. And M mode recordings actually allow the measurement of cardiac dimensions and motion patterns. You can actually analyze the time relationships with other physiological variables and time them with the ECG and the heart cycle accordingly. Final points on mode, A mode is a basic mode, single scan line is passed through heart. B mode comprises of repetitive scan lines. M mode, wherein movement of the heart can be obtained as a time motion or a M mode recording providing dynamic cardiac images. Then you've got a 2D echo, wherein you acquire multiple B mode scan lines which are aligned in the appropriate anatomic location and they actually form a wedge-shaped sector image which is conical and that provides additional spatial information in superior inferior and medial lateral directions. So this is how the display looks you know for M mode for B mode A mode as a straight line and uh, so when we talk in terms of finer points on M mode echo, it gives you a better display of motion and it gives you a better display of thickness of the ventricular walls. It actually tells you more about changing size of cardiac chambers and it will give you more information about opening and closure of valves. What about Doppler echo? It is a method for detecting the direction and velocity of moving blood within the heart. If you've got a pulse wave Doppler, it is useful for low velocity flow such as mitral valve. If you've got a continuous wave uh, Doppler, it is useful for high velocity flow such as aortic stenosis. If you've got a color flow, then it can be used to designate the direction of blood flow. Now, most of the times when we talk in terms of color, red is actually flow towards and blue is the flow away from the transducer with turbulent flow, which is actually seen as a mosaic pattern. So the different colors indicate the direction of blood flow. Red would be towards the transducer, blue would be away from the transducer, and green would be superimposed when there is a superimposed, uh, like when there's a turbulent flow. So blue would be away and red would be towards, and both of them coming together as a turbulent flow would be seen as green. So what is the difference between echo and Doppler? When it comes to 2D echo, ultrasound target is tissue, whereas when we talk of Doppler, it is always blood. When you talk in terms of goal of diagnosis with a 2D echo, is it is always to delineate the anatomic details. With Doppler, it is for physiologic details. Type of information that is given by 2D echo is structural, whereas with Doppler, it is functional. Optimal alignment between beam and target is perpendicular in 2D echo, and it is parallel in Doppler. Preferred transducer frequency for 2D echo is high, whereas for Doppler, it is a low frequency, what we're talking about. And just a word on transesophageal echo. It is used to assess posterior structures like left atrium or aorta. Basically, because of the close proximity of esophagus to the posterior wall of the heart, it is important and it is ideal for examining certain uh, important um, structures. You can actually position the transducer in the esophagus or stomach for extended periods, which provides an opportunity to monitor the heart over time, such as during cardiac surgery. It is extremely safe and well tolerated, and it can be even performed in critically ill patients and very small infants. The only uh, places wherein you are trying to do it is would be inadequate transthoracic images, patients with aortic disease, when you want to rule out infective endocarditis, you want to look at source of embolism, any wall prosthesis, or when you want to look for intraoperative monitoring. What are the contraindications? Of course, there would be esophageal pathologies, you can have dysphagia, stricture, diverticulosis certain times bleeding varices or cancers. 
or you can have a cervical spine disorder in terms of atlantoaxial joints or any orthopedic conditions which can prevent flexion of the neck. They would be contraindications. So to conclude, echocardiography will provide a substantial amount of structural and functional information about the heart. Still frames would actually provide you anatomic detail, dynamic images would be function. It is high operator dependent and disproportionate to experience and skill. And the value of information derived depends heavily upon the one who is actually performing. Thank you.